Now, one royal mystery solved, another blown wide open. The skeleton dug up in a Leicester car park two years ago has now been proven to be Richard III after new DNA tests on two of his descendants. It's helped a geneticist to work out what the last Plantagenet King of England really looked like. But it's not such good news for some of the current royals, as tests also raise question marks over the succession. That could have implications for the Queen herself, as Jane Deeth reports. The skull of a king who lives on in legend. Deformed, unfinished, sent before my time into this breathing world, scarce half made up. And whilst I live to account this world but hell, until this misshaped trunk that bears this head be round impelled with a glorious crown. He's painted as the hunchback monarch, rumoured to have murdered his nephews, the princes in the tower. Richard was slain by Henry Tudor's army at the Battle of Bosworth. Two years ago, a Leicester car park gave up a skeleton from the right period with a twisted spine and battle injuries. Dr. Turi King took mitochondrial DNA from the skeleton's teeth and compared it with that of two descendants of Richard down the female line, Michael Ibsen and Wendy Duldig. They all matched. Michael Ibsen's DNA was a carbon copy of the King's. Standing alone with the remains of Richard III to know that you're related to him and then you share mitochondrial DNA. It was, it was a profoundly moving moment, I think. You know, it's the one moment that will stick with me, I think, the rest of my life. The DNA match plus the age and condition of the skeleton means it must be the last of the Plantagenets. But Dr King can go one better than that. By looking at Richard's DNA, she's able to say this is actually the most accurate likeness of the King. We were able to predict from that that he would have a 96% chance of having blue eyes and a 77% chance of having blonde hair, though this would be a childhood hair colour and it can darken with age. Have you studied images of Richard III and then looked in the mirror and thought, well, I can see a resemblance? I've had friends and uh, other people who've uh, done that and said, oh yes, we see a, something about the shape of the nose or the shape of the cheeks. And uh, I, I don't see it personally, but I've been told that some people think there is a bit of a resemblance. You do have blue eyes. Did you have blonde hair as a child? Yes, indeed. My brother, my sister and I were all very blonde as children. So the popular swarthy image of Richard could be Tudor propaganda. This is Richard the Myth, the Shakespearean character, with his more pronounced hunchback, his withered hand and broken sword, and his altogether more sinister look. The Tudors pointed to a royal bloodline descending from John of Gaunt, the son of Edward III. But when historian Professor Kevin Shurer looked at Richard's male family tree, some of the male Y chromosomes didn't match. That means there's infidelity somewhere. If the break in the royal line lies with John of Gaunt, that has implications for the House of Windsor. Now, John of Gaunt's son Henry became Henry IV, and of course his child Henry V, his child Henry VI. So a break between John of Gaunt and Edward would be quite critical. We're not in any way suggesting that the current monarch isn't uh, legitimate. All we're saying is that there is a potential question over some of the Plantagenet monarchs. To pinpoint the infidelity, you'd have to bring up the bodies. In a historical full circle, Michael Ibsen has been commissioned to make his ancestors coffin, even as Richard III leaves us a new mystery to savour.